All right, guys, so the welcome screen is done for now. What we need to do now is we need to make that new scene pretty much that the game is going to be happening. Again, this is going to be real simple. It's only going to have one level, and it's just going to be that dude shooting balls, whatever. But let's go ahead and make that level right now. So again, making a new level or a new scene is a two-part process. We first need the interface, and then we need the brains, or we can do it in the opposite way. It doesn't really matter what order you created it. But if you go to File, New, File, let's... uh. Let's make the brains first, who cares? All right, so file, new file, and make sure you're at iOS, source, and what we wanna select is Coco Touch Class, and click next. Now for the class is just, what do I wanna name my scene? I'll just name it like Shooter Scene. And it is a subclass of SK Scene. This is a sprite kit scene that we're working with. Swift looks good. And right there looks good as well. Great. All right, so first let me get rid of all this. And it's giving me an error right here because it's saying, all right, you need to import Sprite Kit. So there you go. All right, so that takes care of the error. And right now these are brains to something. It doesn't have a user interface to go with it. So let's go ahead and make that Spray kit scene right now. So in order to do this, if we go to file, new file, what we can do is click iOS resource. Now from here, we can choose spray kit scene and click next. And we actually want to save this as shooter scene. Now you're like, all right, well, you actually named that other file shooter scene but that's actually what you want to do. So if you notice, the name of the brains and the name of the scene are the same exact name. And that's just because, I don't know, it makes sense. You're like, all right, to where's the brains of this? Oh, it's the one with the same name, but with a Swift extension instead of SKS. So, hold on a second. I just sprayed cologne and now it's uh, like getting all in my nose. All right. So right now here is our scene. Again, this is the main level that we're going to be playing. Eventually, it's going to be full of a bunch of things dropping from the sky and dudes shooting things. Right now, it's blank. But if we run the game, we have a little problem. We have this new scene, but we have no way to get there. I mean, it says tap to play, but I'm tapping and it ain't letting me play. So let's fix that problem right now. So if you hop over to the brains in game scene dot swift, so inside touches began, which again is going to be called anytime the user taps the screen. The first thing we want to do is get a reference to that label and we can just call child node with name intro label. So now this constant is a reference to that label that said tap to begin. So the first thing I actually want to do is just make sure that it is not equal to empty pretty much verifies that it did have time to load. And then we can start with the transitioning of going to the next scene. So essentially all we want this to do whenever the user taps the screen is take us to this game scene. Now, right now it's empty, but eventually we're gonna be, you know, setting everything up on there. So how do we do that? Well, we can just write like one or two lines of code to take us there, but I'm gonna show you guys how to add transitions because, I don't know, they just make your game a little bit better. So I'll just uh, make a simple one that'll fade out. And if you call SK action, fade out with duration, how long do you want this fade out to last? Well, how about one second? So again, this is an action. Now remember, only nodes, only objects can call actions. Your dude runs, your dude shoots, the enemy attacks. Well, this label is gonna call this action. So intro label, run action. Now the action, of course, we just made is called fade out. Now there's an optional parameter called completion. And inside here, you can write what code you want to happen whenever this action is completed. So the label is going to fade out, and then what? Well, essentially, we just want to go to the next scene, but let me show you guys this first. 
there is actually um this transition called doors and it's hard, it's gonna be easier if you just see it but it's essentially just like a box opening up and it looks like you're walking through a set of doors and i think it's a really cool way to uh go to the next scene so you can call it anything you want i'm just gonna call it doors set equal to sk transition Doors, there's actually a bunch of different ones. Doors with duration, doorway with duration. So how long do you want this to last? Actually, let me put it for like a 1.5. I know the frame rate on my screen recorder is kind of weird, so I'll try to slow everything down. Let me put this to 1.5 as well. Again, you might want to put it a little faster whenever you're actually making a game, but I just want to make sure that you guys can see it on uh, YouTube. All right. So now we have all these transitions, but we don't even have a reference to the other screen yet. So again, this other screen is called Shooter Scene. So let's get a reference to that because then when we say, hey, we want to go to a new level, it's going to be like, all right, well, where? All right, so let Shooter Scene equals shooter scene file named shooter scene and they always add that extra stupid all right there we go so now shooter scene is a reference to that new level so this is again how you get a reference to it so now we have it in memory we actually have to say go there so in order to do that, one last line of code, self dot view present scene. Now what scene do we want to present? Well, we want to present shooter scene right there. And an optional parameter is how do you want to get there? Well, how about this transition doors? So it, um, I don't know, it's, it's better than just popping up in my opinion. So this is how you set up a core transition. This is how you get a reference to another scene or level. And this is how you actually make it take you there. So now if you run this, check out what happens. Whenever we tap the screen, it's going to call touches began. And then this is going to fade out for one second. And actually, let me run that again. I'll explain to you guys what's going on. So again, watch what happens. This label right here is going to fade out and it's going to take a second and a half. Now, once it's done fading out, what's going to happen is it's going to open those doors, which is going to take another second and a half and present to you that new level. So let me click fade out for a second and a half, open the doors and it pops up the gray level, the gray boring level. But that is pretty much how you create new levels and transition between them. So now if we wanted to, we can add the same functionality to go back, but obviously we actually wanna start building a game, so that's what we're gonna do in the next video. So I'll see you then.